The Still Rain DLC is releasing soon on all platforms and there's plenty new content to explore. Let me show you over 20 new free items any player can get outside of Seasons. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. I hope you're having a good one. Now, I've been working on this video for quite some time now collecting details on as many new items anyone can get for free with a new DLC, mostly from the upcoming Steel Rain missions and the new Midweek rewards for 2021. In this item overview, I will show you over 20 new items as well as how can you obtain them all. Remember, none of the following items are part of the season scoreboard. This list includes new weapons, a new power armor set, new outfits, lots of new decor and even a new cooking station. I will test some of the new gear as well. I hope you're ready because I surely am, so let's do this! The Still Rain DLC is bringing new missions with some exciting new rewards attached to them. One of the very first unique rewards you can get is the mercenary outfit from the missing persons mission to be more specific. Once you complete this quest, you will get this outfit and the respective plan to craft as many as you want. But sadly, this item is not tradable, which means you cannot trade or sell to other players the legit way at least. Anyway, this is a rather simple and dark outfit without a lot of detail. Besides the bullet vest around the chest, there's hardly anything of importance going on with this outfit. As you can see, it's basically a leather jacket with jeans with leather parts, which perfectly matches the top. Let's not forget the military boots, of course. I know simplicity is the forte here, but sometimes simple is great. At least I think so. There's another free new outfit you can get from the Steel Rain missions, that's right, after completing the Out of the Blue quest, you can unlock the Brotherhood CV's outfit, as well as the respective plan, just like it works for the Mercenary one. It looks like this, it's a yellow casual outfit, and as the name indicates, it's what supposedly the Brotherhood of Steel members wear when they are not on duty, which is a rare event in the Wasteland. There's a lot more thought and detail put into this outfit than the mercenary one, that's for sure. There's a whistle necklace followed by two Brotherhood logos, a red one on the right chest part and a grey logo on the right arm. The outfit comes with a few pockets in the front and back, as well as a flashlight attached to the belt. One of the back stashes even has a Nuka Cola and Pioneer Scout badges. As I said, there's some insane detail here. Anyhow, this outfit is proof that a Brotherhood of Steel member is never unprepared, even when they are off duty. I really like this one, especially because it has so much detail and it's quite unusual and different from the outfits we usually get. What else can you expect from the Steel Rain mission rewards? Well, one of them is supposed to be a cryogenic bed for your camp and shelters, obtainable from a Satisfied Conscience mission. But for several weeks, this item had no model on the public test servers, as shown. The placeholder bed was this generic one, but in reality, it's supposed to look like this a white horizontal pod, straight from a sci-fi movie. Apparently Bethesda updated this reward last week or so, but meanwhile they disabled it because I cannot find it anywhere in the PTS anymore. Why though, you may ask? Well, after researching, I think it's probably because there are several heavy bug reports already, such as the pod is appearing after being placed, or when you sleep on it, there is a chance the pod will simply disappear into thin air. In other cases, players can't even build the cryogenic bed despite the plan being learned. The item will always show a red highlight. Yeah, so far it sounds like a really broken item, so it's no surprise they have disabled it for now. Anyway, let's hope they manage to fix it in time and still include it in the DLC release. Okay, now let's move on to a new set of power armor, no joke. But as they're adding the Hellcat power armor to the Steel Rain DLC, you can unlock a full set on a frame and the respective plans to craft. 
after completing the Catalyst mission. But how good is this new set exactly? Well, let's say it could be better. At least you get a passive to reduce ballistic damage, 2% per piece, but it's not enough to make it competitive in my view. This set used to be stronger at the beginning of the public test server, but meanwhile Bethesda decided to nerf it and we don't know exactly why. I'm showing you a full set of Hellcat and Strangler Heart for comparison purposes and as you can see the Hellcat falls behind in every way possible. Overall this new set used to have superior physical defense well compared to the Strangler Heart and T51 for example, however when it comes to energy defense it had about the same as the Strangler Heart and 54 less than the T51. If we compare the radiation resistance it has 100 less than the Strangler Heart and 100 more than the T51. But that has changed completely. As it is now, less than two weeks before Steel Rain goes live, the Hellcat power armor is a weak set in my opinion. I compared my defense with the three sets, level 50, no legendary pieces, same perks, same build, same everything, and that's what I got. The torso itself speaks for what it means, I think. It's a huge letdown, but if you take a closer look at the set defense, you can quickly understand the Hellcat is not for end game. I mean, the T51 and Strangler Heart provide a bit more defense and protection stats overall. I mean, the physical defense is about the same on all of them. However, the Strangler Heart provides about 200 more radiation defense and the T51 boosts your energy resistance by about 130. Anyway, moving forward, you can turn the Hellcat set into legendary with still rain as every other power armor. As for the respective mods, you can get the Hellcat mod plans from Vault 79 at Rex or from faction vendors if you have maxed out your reputation with the raiders and the settlers as shown here in the screenshots. You can get the usual mods such as calibrated shocks, a jetpack or the medic pump. Most mods cost a lot of gold bullion though, so it's probably wise to choose carefully what you want to get first. Well, to finish this point, the Hellcat power armor is not the best choice for endgame, if it stays as it is. There are far better options alive already. In my view, the only real pro here is the accessibility. Any character who finishes the Steel Rain questline can immediately unlock all the Hellcat plans and easily craft a set. Other than that, I say keep your Strangler Heart sets, Ultrasight, T51 and other options that provide overall better stats. Because the Hellcat is not that good. It's okay, it's decent, it used to be way better, but right now it's not the best option, that's for sure. The last new and free item you can get from the Steel Rain questline is the Face Breaker, a new 3 stars unarmed named weapon with 40% more power attack, 1 strength and your attacks get more powerful with every hit. This one obviously falls under the Power Fist category, so you can use the usual mods if you already own them. It also has its own unique skin, but the damage output is far from being impressive. I conducted a few tests using the unarmed perk, and as shown, I need a few hits to kill super mutants. Ghouls go down a bit more easily, but they also require two hits on average. It's definitely not the worst weapon out there, but it's also not part of the end game list. I mean, almost any bloodied unarmed weapon will deal more damage than the face breaker for example. Anyway, you can get his new weapon from the mission A Knight's Penance, just to make it clear. Next we have the same item, that's also why I kept it as number 10 in the list. Well, you can unlock the face breaker plan, but to do so you need to farm daily operations. Yeah, that's right, don't ask me why did they go for this? It makes absolutely no sense, especially because the weapon is untradeable and the legendary effects cannot be changed. 
Moreover, this addition to the daily ops rare rewards, together with the other existing named weapons, will only serve to dilute the rewards even further. I think Bethesda should have just added the plan together with the weapon itself, just like they did with the new outfits and even the new Hellcat power armor set, but sadly, they did not follow the same logic here for whatever reason. Okay, now that we are done with the new mission rewards, let's explore the free goodies being added to the seasonal event midweek in 2021. First of all, Bethesda is adding this awesome Wasteland cooking station skin called Grocery Cart. And as you can see, it's a one of a kind invention, the type of item we could really use more often in terms of immersion. I mean, just look at that. It's like some bright mind just used whatever scraps they had at hand to create something new, something useful and practical. In this case, a cooking station out of a shopping cart and half a bicycle. Anyway, it obviously works as a normal cooking station when you interact with the item and just to complete the point, here's the full item animation showing what your character does while using this workbench. It's a true calorie burner, literally, cooking and exercising on the spot. Who would have thought of that? Hmm? They should really make one in real life, just saying. I bet it would become a world trend or something. Bicycle grill, hmm, it's a genius idea, I really think so. Something else you can get from Meatweek this year is this lovely floor decor, a plastic fruit bowl. At long last, we get some decent decor for kitchens. The bowl looks like it's made of black metal and inside you can find several different plastic fruits, such as apples, bananas, plums and even an orange. I know these are supposed to be plastic fruits, but they look pretty real to me. It's not like we have ultra high realistic graphics in 76, so feel free to use it as you please. It looks real. Besides the plastic fruit bowl, you can also unlock a new wall decor of the same team with his ears meet week. That's right, everyone, you can get his lovely wreath, which looks like a unique model. I mean, there are apples, pears and pomegranates mixed with pines and green leaves. I would say this is a great wall decor for almost every room. The curious part here is that you can place it almost anywhere you want, including attached to other items such as tables, terminals and even screens. Yes, screens. You can use this item as some sort of frame. Just look at that. I know it's a bit weird, but you can definitely get creative here, and that's fun and very convenient. What else can you farm from Meat Week this year? Well, Bethesda added a decoy duck set featuring three duck toys or figures, which work like floor decor, as to be expected. The first duck entry looks like a female due to the iconic tool colors beige, brown and grey. Then we have two male ducks. The first one has a lot of green and grey parts as well, while the third option represents the typical male duck with a green neck, red chest and grey and black bodies. I think this is a fine addition to the decor building options, especially because we have so many rustic, woodsy and vintage items already, so the ducks will fit like a charm. Even for more modern camps and shelters, duck figures are timeless, so it fits perfectly almost anywhere. All right, now let's move on to one of the highlights coming with Steel Rain, the Pepper Shaker. A new weapon that fits in several categories. It's truly a one-of-a-kind weapon that will enable different playstyles. How comes? Well, the Pepper Shaker is a heavy gun and a shotgun at the same time. Once you get the plan, you can craft a normal version up to level 50 and then turn it into a legendary with a new crafting system. As for the respective mods, you can acquire them in exchange for gold bullion at regs inside Vault 79 or alternatively, if you have maxed out your faction reputation, you can get them from Sam at the Foundation or Mortimer at the Creator. They all have the same prices, so pick your poison, as they say. Anyhow, how do I know this weapon is both a shotgun and a heavy gun? 
Well, that's because I tested both perks and their strength, and both heavy gunner and shotgunner perks boosted the shaker's base damage as you can see, so it's definitely labeled as both weapon categories, at least for now. If it's intended or a bug, I'm not sure, but I think it's intended. You can boost the damage up to 100% just like this, which makes this new gun much, much stronger than what I'm showing, because I didn't use all the perks, I needed some space, I only used three heavy gun perks. Anyway, I managed to roll a two-shot pepper shaker and added some basic mods, as shown. I ended up testing with around 190 base damage, which is already pretty good. And well, I must confess, I had high expectations here which were not exactly fully met. This weapon is quite strong, but, there is a huge but, just at close range, pretty much. Let me explain though. This weapon has a huge area of effect. When you fire, it produces this wide beam, which spreads your bullets in a cone. The further you are from the target, the wider the cone becomes and the less damage you deal, as to be expected. Ideally, you want to use VATS to concentrate all your hit power and avoid missing. If you have a VATS build, then, my friend, this weapon is really, really strong for you. Otherwise, I don't recommend it, because the cons outweigh the pros. Moreover, the Pepper Shaker is also a bullet eater. It empties your magazine in no time. I mean, it takes only a few seconds to use about 100 ammo, no joke. At long range, things get silly too. You will miss a lot even using vets, and it's extremely difficult to hit your targets. Again, because this is a heavy shotgun. In other words, you need dozens of bullets to kill weak targets when they are not close to you. Now, to balance things out a little bit, a huge benefit of this weapon is the fact that you can equip the Enforcer perk under agility to cripple enemies, and boy, oh boy, it does cripple very easily, including elite enemies such as a dead claw or a behemoth. I even managed to cripple a horde of super mutants with a few hits, quite impressive. It's a fun weapon to play with, that's for sure. It's very different from any other weapons we have in game, but as I said, it eats ammo and it's not reliable, especially outside of fats, especially outside of fats and when shot at mid and long range. Nonetheless, I believe this weapon will be used a lot, especially with some better legendary effects and mods than the ones I used for the initial test. It has potential, it will surely be one of the popular weapons because it's new, because it's quite strong and it can be very, very useful in certain situations, especially if you don't mind playing close to your targets. But hey, you never know the future, so we will have to wait and see what happens. That's it for midweek new rewards, but hold on, there are a few more items to go over, such as the legendary cores. This new item is being introduced with Steel Rain as a core element for the legendary crafting system. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this item already from the public test server, but what you might not know is that Bethesda has been changing the requirements over time. The latest change reduced some of the requirements, but they are still quite high in my opinion. Opinion. Let's leave that for another video. Now, how can you obtain legendary cores, you may ask? Well, it's a tricky question. First of all, forget about normal events. You can only farm them by completing public events, and the amount you loot depends on the public event tier. And for events with objective tiers, it also depends on how successful you finish the event. Now, these two rules are quite confusing, and I suspect there's also a bug in the middle of all of this, because while testing, I often came across no legendary cores when I completed public events. For example, tea time and primal cuts do not seem to reward you with any, but events like guided meditation and Graham's cooking event give you three pair completion. Keep in mind that new legendary cores do not show up on the new tab, so you need to manually count them to know if you received new cores from an event or not. Meanwhile, I asked around and it seems like some events are not rewarding cores based on how well you perform. For example, Radiation Rumble has objective tiers, right? But the rewarded cores are fixed, according to the Dataminer Gilpo. 
It makes no sense. Maybe this is the only exception to the rule? Who knows? Anyhow, Bethesda has been changing the rules for core farming and honestly speaking, as it is right now, it feels messy, buggy and inconsistent. Let's hope they can improve the system and simplify things a little bit before Steel Rain hits the official servers, but we are less than two weeks from the release date, so I don't have a lot of hopes left for this to improve, but it really needs some sort of rework, because as it is, it is super confusing, and I think it will be very, very difficult to farm cores, because, I mean, if there are public events, that do not give you any, you know? And it's not like public events are very easy to find. Normally maps are empty. So uh, yeah, let's wait and see how things go. But this is what I discovered so far. Okay, the last four free new items coming with Still Rain are the latest PTS pennants. Bethesda is rewarding two with Paladin Ramani's face and another two with Knight Shin's face. Following the usual format, one simple pennant flag and a duplicate with a wooden frame. Now, if you are wondering how can you lock these four items, well, you need to act now. You need to take part of the ongoing public test server on PC and meet the requirements. There are three. The first one is to complete the new Steel Rain questline. Then you must use the legendary crafting system at least five times. And the last requirement is to find and buy something from Minerva, a new NPC trader coming with the DLC. Once it's live, it releases on July 7, there is no way to unlock these pennants anymore and they will become sort of legacy items like all the previous released pennants. So if you want them, make sure to hurry up because there's not a lot of time left. Well, there's plenty of new items coming with the Steel Rain DLC, and I know there are dozens of new free entries coming with Season 5 as well, Escape from the 42nd Century. However, this video was dedicated to all the new free items coming outside of the scoreboard. I hope the information shared here helps you farm the new goodies once the new update is live. There's also a list on the Fallout Wiki with all the new items, plans, mods and so on. I'm leaving the link right below the video in case you want to check it out together with the Meatweek Rewards Data Mine Cheat. It's always useful to know what you can get and what are the chances to get it. Now that's it from my part. I am Marta Branco and as usual, thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a like and comment below. Of course, subscribe if you haven't yet and stay tuned for more. A huge shout out to all my supporters. You guys make the difference for me. And do let me tell you, I have a small surprise for you all coming in the next few days. Well then, I will see you very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!